It's Wake Up Wyoming with Glenn Woods. Six the time. It's Wake Up Wyoming. It is a Thursday, and I swear I can see the weekend from here. Today's show is sponsored by Horseshoe Door Stops, made from real horses. Um, well, okay, you could have just made it from their shoes, but... Warning, this show contains reference to guns. Liberty, limited government, low taxation, the cult of climate change, free thinking, cigar smoking, short people, rubber chickens, Karen's bureaucracy, liberal buzzwords, tour runs, traffic, toilets, terrible jokes, and more. No apologies will be issued. Guest callers may express any opinion they want without fear of being canceled. Unless you're a loudmouth jerk like Dave, then Glenn will hang up on you. Strap in, hold on to your coffee, and feel free to participate. This disclaimer does not refer to every person named Dave. Just one particular Dave from San Francisco. We know a lot of Daves. They call this show all the time, and they're great people. So don't call this program and complain that we use your name. That would be a real Dave move. I'll Dave. get into it a little bit later this morning, but uh, some results in, you know, I'm not really big on polls, about the debates that happened the other night, Tuesday night. And the results were not exactly what the Democrats were hoping for. Not the big bump the Republicans wanted. But then again, if you're thinking, well, Trump lost that one, that didn't happen either. I'm still of the opinion it's mostly just a, a wash for both of them there. But it really is interesting when independents, who's every, that's who they're after, both parties, is those people who don't pay attention to politics to the last minute. As they watched the debate, their reaction was not what all of the pundits – the so-called experts thought that the reaction was going to be. We'll get into that later on this morning. This is big news here in the state of Wyoming. First off, let's go over to uh, Bar None and Campbell County, Europe, next on this. So there was a glow of a fire if you were high enough up. In fact, there's one lady that I saw on social media. She was driving down Casper Mountain. And she stopped at the overlook and took some pictures because from the overlook, she could see the fire north of Bar None. So for those people who don't know the area, if you think of where Casper, Wyoming is, just up the interstate on I-25 is the town of Bar None, very tiny town, but it's real close. And then just north of there, there was a fire. And I got some details on it, but that's what firefighters were working on last night. Here's the latest. Multiple rescues, I'm sorry, multiple resources currently on the scene, active fire, I-25 and bar none. North of the airport and uh, let's see, Casper EMS are asking the public, please do not phone 911 because they know about it and they're working on it. And that's all that I got last night from it. And if there's anything else going on there right now, I don't know. But if you do know of it, please pass it along. I would like to know, the listeners would like to know, and our news department here would like to know as well. Also, Campbell County. A new wildfire, the story says, started in the northern end of Campbell County. The fire is surrounded by the Olmsted, Olmsted Road, for those who know the area, uh, south of Bowers, uh, east of the Montana, uh, yeah, south of Bowers to the east, and right up near the Montana state line, uh, Bay Horse Road. So this is uh, an evacuation notice that was sent out to borderline estate ranchettes due to multiple wind shifts. They don't really know where it's going to go. They're asking people in the area, just please get out. Now, the story we have on the Wake Up Wyoming website this morning, you can actually see the area they blocked out for that fire. So that's the northern Campbell County, Wyoming area. Now, some of the other fires, uh, the one that's uh, the Fish Creek Fire, that's way over the close Togedy Pass a couple of times. That one got some rain yesterday and last night. Didn't put anything out, but that's certainly helpful to the firefighters. Togedy Pass remains open right now. So they're still pushing on that one. Also, the uh, fire that's between the House Draw Fire, between uh, Casey and Buffalo, Still burning, although last I looked, it was like 97% contained, but still working and burning. And there's a bunch of other fires out there. I put up a whole list for you of old fires and some new ones because 
when we had some rain move over the area yesterday, which was good to see, the clouds in the air and storms building, but then we didn't get a whole lot of lightning. Well, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We didn't get a whole lot of wet with it. We got a whole lot of lightning strikes with it, and that just makes for more fires. So, including bar none, there's a lot of little things that popped up all over the place. And so that's what firefighters are dealing with. I'm happy to say most of them were just stomped out fast. But still, there's a lot of little things they're dealing with all over the place. And that's just the season we're in. And it was windy yesterday and might be a little on the windy side today, which is not good for the firefighters. They definitely don't need that. Now, besides just some updates that I have for you on the Wake Up Wyoming site as to what the latest fires are, and there's quite a list of them there. Also, I had told you about something online called the Wyoming Ranchers Fire Relief Page. Now, that's also a story that I have on the Wake Up Wyoming site this morning, including a link to this. Now, this is a Facebook link. I should put their phone number in there, too, so you can just go ahead and give them a call because not everybody's on Facebook, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. They started an online auction for things. They're doing all sorts of way, anything they can think of, to raise money and resources, and if people have hay, people have trucks, people have equipment, whatever it might be, folks are pitching in. And then they decided to go ahead and do some auction items as well. So let me see. Here's one really pretty picture of someone who's trying to auction off. Here's a vacation. Some bigger items like that that some people are trying to auction off. Here's a lady who makes homemade jams. I mean, anything they can think of just to raise money uh, to provide relief for ranchers out there because, you know, something like this is expensive. So if you'd like to help out, that story is on the Wake Up in Wyoming site this morning. And I titled that Join the Online Auction to Help Wyoming Ranchers. And proceeds for this, you basically go on their Facebook page, go down, look at what you want. And they're taking bids right there on the Facebook page. And at close of the auction, if you have the winning bid, they'll contact you and make arrangements. And the money goes toward helping ranchers who need, as you can imagine, all sorts of things. But also, if you have any kind of equipment or hay or feed or whatever you can do and offer, they'll take that too. So that is a Facebook page that was put up a couple of weeks ago, the Wyoming Rancher Fire Relief page. Just people helping people in Wyoming. Most of it is ranchers helping ranchers. In fact, a lot of the auction items that I was looking at as I went through this this morning, I thought, boy, this is real rancher stuff. Like one guy, he's willing to give your kids roping lessons. Yeah, you pay him, he'll make sure the money goes to the relief program, and you'll teach your kids roping lessons. I, or ladies, if you'd like to rope your husband. Or, or single women, if you want to rope a man. Fine, he'll probably go ahead and do that too. As long as the money goes toward the cause that they're putting up there. So that's just some of the latest on the fire. Now, again, anybody out near the Bar Nun area or know anything about the Bar Nun fire, I would like to know a little bit more about that because I've seen plenty of pictures of it from yesterday and last night, but I don't know any more than I just told you about it this morning. I'm just at the base of a hiking trail. A buddy of mine was like, hey, Paul, do you want to go hiking today? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to be out of breath while we talk for three and a half hours. I love hiking. You get to be outside and you get to be aware of coyotes and you get to carry around a wooden stick like you're a wizard and you get to say things like, great day for a hike. And you get to hide and pee at the same time and you get good cardio and blisters and you get to ask questions like, do you think that's poisonous? And you get to pass by other hikers and not say anything and just go and you get to take hiking selfies to show everybody that you're healthier than they are. And you get to see who's going to be the first to say, should we turn around? So I love hiking. Wake up, Wyoming Woods on K2 Radio. Got something to say? Chat him on the Wake Up, Wyoming mobile app or call 888-97-WOODS. Six twenty two is the time. It's Wake Up, Wyoming. My name is Glenn Woods. Thanks for joining me. Okay, just a show of hands out there. Uh, see who cares. The Wicked Witch of the West, Nancy Pelosi. I call her Nancy Pooh. 
suggests that 30 percent of Republicans who would never vote for a Democrat are racist, sexist, and homophobic. Anybody out there care what Nancy Pelosi thinks? Anybody? Show of hands? Anybody? No? Okay. And another pop music star uh, went ahead and in, endorsed Harris. Anybody care what pop music stars say? Anybody? Show of hands? Nobody? Okay. <clears throat> Just checking. All right. So here's some of the stories I have. Now, you know I'm not really big on polls. I'm not huge on polls. I'm just interested to see, after what I thought of watching the debate the other night, what was the reaction of the American people. And I'm really interested not in what the pundits have to say. Don't care. The so-called experts don't care. What the polls say, don't care. I'm watching those independent voters and what they think. The people who have not made up their minds because they tend to not even think about politics until the last possible minute. Jim and Casper. Nancy who? No, Nancy Pooh. But anyway, so in looking at this, what independent voters thought, again, people who don't pay attention to the last second. In watching the debate, I've watched quite a few interviews across the country this morning with independents. Generally, what I heard was, well, Trump came across as angry. Now, while Harris came across as very well rehearsed, at the same time, no, she dodged a lot of questions. And the independent voters noticed that, that she dodged a lot of questions. And when she did promise all sorts of things, she didn't have any details on what she was promising. Just all sorts of things she was going to get done, a lot of which independent voters understood, but you can't get that done. Include, here's one. Harris said that when she gets elected, she's going to make sure to make abortion a federal law, make abortion legal by federal law. She's going to get it passed through Congress, and she's going to sign it right away. And the independent voter understands she can't do that. Not only is she not going to get the votes in Congress to do it, because Congress is divided, right? So she's not going to get the votes to do it. But even if she did, the Supreme Court already ruled that the federal government can't do that. So, you know, how you plan to get that done, Harris? What do you what do you, what do you plan to do here? If the Supreme Court already said you can't, we're done here. But there's many other things that she promised that she was going to get done without any details. I mean, it's easy for someone to say, "I'm going to lower inflation." Yeah, and your plan is so independent voters notice that now. I did notice most independent voters, while they may not necessarily like Trump, I mean, he kind of grates on people. If you're not a big – if you're a big fan, you love the guy. But if you're not someone who really follows him that much, he can be annoying. However, they were looking at his record as president and they were thinking he did get a lot done. Like him or not, he got a lot done. And so who really did well in that debate? Well, there are some independents that moved into the Trump camp after that. And it's not that they're enthusiastic, rah, rah, they're going to put on MAGA caps. It's just they want to make a decision. And in looking at the two, they end up going, well, I guess I'll go for Trump, I guess. That's basically the enthusiasm factor that you're going to find here. Well, that's fine. You know, a vote's a vote in that case. But if you're thinking it, this whole debate radically swung the needle – one way or the other, it really didn't move it that much. So that's why I was saying yesterday, my opinion was the entire debate was kind of a washout. Trump did not dominate like you Trump supporters were hoping he would do. He did not bring his A game. Harris was very well rehearsed, but not on any details of any kind. It was also noticed that she was in constant attack mode the whole time. She started by saying we should have basically, and I'm paraphrasing, an adult debate, not a lot of name calling. And yet then she launches into a whole lot of name calling and people notice that too. So for those who say that she definitely won the debate, she didn't do all that well either. She may have been well rehearsed, but it didn't translate into, oh gosh, golly, we got to make her president. I got to vote for that. So in the end, it might have helped Trump a little bit, okay, kind of, but that's about all we got out of the debate. So at this point, my thought is 
if I were able to give Trump any kind of advice, and you know, gosh, he tunes in every morning, right? So if I were to give him any kind of advice, it would be, now's the time that you really bring it. We've got a short time left here, and what you got to do is lay out your plan for the American people, appear presidential, remind everybody what you did last time, lay out your plan, and go for it. And just keep reminding people that for the past four years, through everything that everybody's been through, it's been a Biden-Harris White House. And they had all the time in the world to fix all sorts of problems, and they didn't. In fact, many things got worse. Just point that out and then point to, but here's what I'm going to do to put things back to where they were before Biden and Harris got into office. That That's a campaign he can run in short order. Morning, John, ID John, and Granite Canyon. Morning, Glenn. Are Trump and Harris the best a country of 350 million can do. I've often thought that, John, and I've thought no. Now, honestly speaking, there's a lot of other people I would rather see running for office than either of those two right now. But that's who people pick through the primary. So, And the third parties out there, the Constitution Party, the Libertarian Party, for example, their candidates are just really bad this time around. I mean, horrible. Coming up on 6.30, local news, weather forecast, Wake Up Wyoming. Wake Up Wyoming with Glenn Woods. Make your voice heard at 888-97-WOODS. This is AM 1030 K2 Radio. 36 at time. Just wake up, Wyoming. I was going to go on to another topic, but you guys are dropping some good comments here, so I'm going to go to this. And you can do that, too, if you haven't tried it yet. Download the Wake Up Wyoming app at your app store, which is free. And then when I'm on the air, touch the chat option and send me notes here. So let me say, uh, John and Gillette, here's Vice President Harris during the debate. And you get a pony, and you get a pony, and you... Yes. Basically, that's what she's doing. It's like watching Oprah Winfrey. And everybody gets a pony. And it's not just a pony. It's a damn unicorn farting rainbows and skills. But she has no explanation as to how you're going to get any of those things. All the things that she promises, but there's no explanation. And some of those things are flat out impossible to do. But she's promising them anyway, hoping that there's gullible voters that will just go, oh, golly, gosh. It, to me, is a lot like when politicians swear to you that uh, they can fix the climate so you'll never have bad weather again. There's a way they can deliver on that, but they think they can. They're hoping you will be naive enough. Let's see, Steve and Casper, I'd rather – okay, Steve. <clears throat> Steve and Casper says, I'd rather put a wet noodle up – a badger's butt then vote for Harris. Wow, what a visual on that one. Let's see, Wolfie in Campion. Morning, Glenn. Stepping back to the solar panel debate, my average power usage per month is 160 kilowatt hours. To fully charge a Tesla, it takes 70 kilowatt hours. Do you see the problem? So just to charge a Tesla, I would need over 40 solar panels, which would take up about 780 square feet. Hmm. <clears throat> Running the math on that makes it look like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? You're know, take, taking up a lot of space. I tell you why. Here's what you do. Here's what you do, Wolfie. Don't put up solar panels. Get yourself a diesel generator. See, the diesel generator takes up a lot less space. I mean, you think about it. A diesel generator to charge a Tesla, you can get one about the size of a, let, let's just call it a pretty good size suitcase, you know. Uh, you know, uh, No, be, better yet, uh, think about an ice cooler that you would take. If you're going to go on a picnic with your family, you know, the size of that ice cooler that you would take, that's about the size of the generator you need. And that diesel generator will charge your Tesla up in a short time. There you go. And put helpful CO2 into the air to make plants grow greener and thicker and lusher. So do that. Buy a Tesla, but then get a diesel generator instead of putting up solar panels. And Eric is in Ashland, Ohio. Hello, Eric. Glenn Kamala wasn't picked uh, a uh, it wasn't picked a candidate by any primer. That's true. 
Joe Biden was. Kamala was appointed candidate by the Democrat ruling elites. She received not a single vote from the people. And that's true. And if I were Democrats, I would be upset by that. Yet for some reason, Democrats aren't. They're just stepping in to fill the vote. I mean, they, they, they march in lock, lockstep with each other. I don't know why. They don't think they march together. So they were told that this is your candidate and all the Democrats are enthusiastically getting behind her. Even though when she did run for president, she ended up having a dropout early. She had absolutely no support. She was not liked. She just fell out really early. But now, oh my Lord, she's Wonder Woman with no substance to her at all. Now, again, she looked very well rehearsed during that debate. She really did. But there was no substance to anything that she said. And independent voters noticed it. So that's why I say, despite what all the pundits had to say, and if you really want to laugh, if you can bear it, if you really want to laugh, go to the MSNBC website and read the comments, especially right after the debate. Oh, my Lord, she just completely creamed and cleaned up. The, you know, And, of course, you know what their pundits are going to say. So, yeah, the Democrats, again, in lockstep behind who they're told that they have to vote for for this uh, race and never really given any chance to think for themselves. But then again, don't worry about it. They don't. It's more like they're looking for someone to lead them, to tell them what to do, rather than having to make up their own mind. So in which case, it's Harris. She has not gone through any vetting process this time around. She did last time around. Everybody rejected her. I really do think, going back to something I.D. John said earlier, and I agree with this, is this the best that we can do? Not just looking at the Republicans and Democrats, but taking a look at the other political parties out there. Because, you know, there have been times that even though my philosophy is mostly libertarian, libertarians pick the worst candidates. They really do. Uh, The Constitution Party is what the Republican Party used to be. The Republican Party, as you would like to see them, for you true Republicans out there. And they usually pick pick pretty good candidates, but this time around they didn't. I mean, this guy's just horrible. And there's nowhere else to look that I can find. And so I'm looking across the board here thinking, really, America, this is who you're picking. And yet I would love to have seen some other people on top of the ticket to make this complete for both Democrats and Republicans. I mean, even Democrats could have done a lot better than Harris and had independent voters wondering, well, maybe I could do that one. Not a radical Democrat, more of a moderate Democrat. They've got some people out there that would probably pass muster with most independent voters. But that's not who they put up. Let's wake up, Wyoming. If it's happening in Wyoming, it's on Wake Up Wyoming with Glenn Woods from K2 Radio. Join the conversation at 888-97-WOODS. 6.50 is the time off to the icebox we go. Frank Gambino is waiting by. Uh, So, Frank, the topic today for at least some of these uh, breaks that you and I are going to do is something that I thought I would give to you as a gift. Oh, I I, I like it's better better to give than receive, right? Yes. Well, no, but okay. (laughs) Worst NFL injuries, according to sports experts oh well oh joe thigh's been breaking his leg oh my god we'll see if that's on the list here number one it would have to be johnny knox 2011 yeah that was a bad one too yeah caught a pass over the middle field lost the ball in the fumble as he dove to recover the ball collided in midair with hardgrove yeah that was with uh, (laughs) with a guy who played with the bears yeah oh wow yeah and did they were they knocked out what happened he was (laughs) for a while. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, you know, what, what's your phone number? Yes, you know, that's that, that right. Yeah, that's it. How many fingers am I yeah, holding yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, that kind of a stuff. Okay. 
Wow. Did he ever get to play again? Is yeah, he okay? I think he, he, he came back, yeah. Yeah, okay. He probably that's, came that's, back going, that's okay, coach. Well, maybe not in that game. But All right. In college athletics, according to a report by Yahoo Sports, four Mountain West Conference teams will be leaving to join the Pac-12 with Oregon State and Washington State beginning in the 2026-27 academic year. Now, 10 schools opted out to leave the Pac-12, leaving just two. And Oregon State and Washington State have said all along they want to build their brand. The four schools that are reportedly leaving are Colorado State, Boise State, San Diego State, and Fresno State. Now, since they are giving two years notice, those four schools will have to pay $18 million to the league each to leave. And the Pac-12 still needs two more schools to reach the NCAA minimum. Now, the Mountain West will be looking for four, maybe you know, just throwing some names out here, North Dakota State, South Dakota State. See if Montana or Montana State wants to join or even invite UTEP back into the fold. So there's a long way to go with this. And also in college football, the Wyoming Cowboys will host BYU on Saturday night in Laramie. The Pokes 0-2, and, and they have numerous issues to address after that the loss to FCS Idaho last week. BYU is 2-0 and after beating SMU a week ago, and the Cougars are 10.5-point favorites in the game. It's a big rivalry game. Everyone should be excited about it. 7 p.m. start on Saturday. We'll have that for you on K2 Radio and Casper and KOWB in Laramie. Our latest WildPreps.com high school football poll is out. Sheridan leads the 4A ranks. Cheyenne second. Natrona third. Campbell County. 24th and Rock Springs 5th. Star Valley is rated number 1 in 3A, followed by Cody, Douglas, Riverton, and Powell. In 2A, Bighorn rated number 1, followed by Mountain View, Lovell, Worland, and Lyman. In 1A, 9-man, Lingle still number 1, Pine Bluffs 2, Southeast 3, Lusk 4, and Wright 5. And in 1A, 6-man, Little Snake River leads the leads the group, followed by Encampment, Burlington, Riverside, and Dubois and Matitsi are tied for 5th. Wyoming Cowboy basketball team announced their schedule yesterday in the non-conference portion. No big names coming to Laramie this year, but they will play Texas is Tech on the road. They'll be in the Cancun tournament against Tulane, Loyola Marymount, and Belmont, plus a, a neutral site game versus BYU and Salt Lake City. And Mountain West play. It's a 20-game schedule with everyone playing everybody home and away. That's it in sports. Everybody is playing everyone? No, no. Sometimes okay. they flip the, that you'd only play, you know, a okay. team in either home or away. Okay. Now you're playing both. Okay, because I kind of, when you said that, I pictured like a field just filled with everybody all at once. No, 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 no. And they're all no, just no, going no. at it at the same time. No, 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 a lot no. like when uh, championship wrestling, you know, has one of those matches where they get all of their wrestlers in the ring at one time. Oh, those are fun, yeah. Yes, and, and people get thrown out onto tables. Yeah, yeah, the Royal Rumble, yeah. Yeah, Royal yeah. Rumble, yeah. That, that would be a fun game if they wanted to do that. Oh, yeah. Tossing it out there, Frank. Right, 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 I'll go to the wrestling uh, thing. No, no, I mean for the other thing. Oh, 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 about. oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Just get yeah. everybody out there at yeah. once, see what yeah. happens. Yeah. All right, yeah. thank you. Coming up on some local business we got to take care of. And hey, roll into news time after that. National local update on the weather forecast. I got a whole host of things to talk about, but people keep dragging me back to, which I understand, uh, Harris and Trump. So they got some more of that, too. The reaction of the American people after the debate was not what the experts told you that the reaction was going to be. We've got some more of that. Let's wake up, Wyoming. Door. Six of time. It's Wake Up Wyoming. My name is Glenn Woods. Thanks for joining me. It's a Thursday, and I swear I can see the weekend from here. The show is sponsored by Horseshoe Door Stops, made from real horses. I don't know why he just wouldn't use the shoes, but if that's the way he wants to go, that's just fine. Triple Eight Ninety Seven Woods. The phone number eight 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 ninety seven W O O D S. Real quick, just to recap, just real quick, what was happening last hour, and if you want to get in on it, you can. So. Just some preliminary numbers and surveys done after Tuesday night's debate. And despite what all of these so-called experts and pundits said, what we're really after here is the independent voter. More than anything, the independent person that doesn't pay attention to politics until the last possible minute. You usually refer to them these days as the low information voter. Those are the ones that Biden... I'm sorry, Biden, he's gone, that uh, Harris and Trump have to court in order to win this thing. 
And after last night's debate, despite everything that you heard, there's no clear winner. The needle did not jump one way or the other. But this is what is being heard. To those people who don't pay attention and don't know a whole lot about Trump or Harris, they look at Trump and think, well, he's kind of loud and annoying. And he is. But at least he had more substance in his debate. As for Harris, she was very well rehearsed, but lacked all substance and was constantly throwing, even though she said we're, we shouldn't have a bunch of insults, there should be an adult discussion, then she launched into a bunch of insults. So in other words, in the end, when people were trying to figure out who to pick, they might look at Trump and think, kind of an annoying guy, but... They remember he did get some really good things done when he was president. So that's a possibility. So there are some independents who are looking at Trump going, yeah, I I might do that again. That's about all they got out of the debate. Again, the needle did not wildly swing one way or the other, and there wasn't any clear winner of it. That's what we're talking about last hour. Something completely different for you now. I came across this story, and I was reading it with some interest this morning, and then I decided, you know, there's something I'm noticing here when I read this list. The headline, Where Burglars Strike, America's Most Theft-Prone States and Cities Revealed. So I'm going down the list here. There's a whole story that goes with it, but let's just take a look at something, and you tell me what you might notice. Top 10 states with highest burglary rates, New Mexico, Washington, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Nevada, Colorado, California, North Carolina, Oregon. Now, if you're saying, well, you know, Wyoming's not there, I didn't expect Wyoming to be there. These days, if you try it, it's not that burglaries don't happen in Wyoming, But when someone tries it, yeah, be careful because it's a very well-armed state. As I read down that list, it's burglary rate per 100,000 people. And uh, it's like New Mexico, 604 burglaries per 100,000 people. That's the kind of numbers we're looking at here, right? As I read down the list, I'm looking at this going, these are mostly Democrat states. I'll read the list, the top 10 list again of the most burglaries in the country. New Mexico, Washington, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Nevada, Colorado, California, North Carolina, Oregon. Now, not all Democrat, but most of those, the vast majority of them, are Democrat states. Top 10 states with the lowest burglary rates. Okay. Now, this is a mixed bag here. Some of them are liberal. New Hampshire, Maine, Virginia, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Vermont, Wisconsin, Idaho. So it's sort of a mixed bag there of whether you're looking at liberal or conservative. Okay, But it didn't really surprise me that when I looked at the top 10 where the most burglaries happen, I'm looking at some very liberal states. Now, if I were to go to burglaries and just crime in general uh, it tends to be again in the more in what i'm talking cities now in the more liberal cities not the more conservative ones and a big part of that is the more conservative ones have once again an armed citizenry and people who don't play victim as much so there's a big difference between them now going back to some of what the story says here have you ever wondered it says how safe you your home really is a new study might just have the answer. Every day in America, over 3,000 homes are broken into. So while I'm reading this article right now, somewhere, someone is a victim of a burglary or even a home invasion. Here's the kicker. Your risk of being burglarized might depend a lot on where you live. A new study has crunched the numbers to reveal which states are burglar magnets Ones thieves tend to avoid as well. Burglary hotspots. So where should you be extra careful about locking your doors and not just putting a regular lock on it? The study which dug deep into FBI data found New Mexico 
tops the list of states with the highest rates. For every 100,000 people, there is about uh, 604 burglaries. That's having a burglar for every small neighborhood. And then again, Washington State, Oklahoma, places like that were also really high on the list as far as burglaries go. Okay, so say on the flip side, if you're looking for a safe place to live where you can pretty much go with your doors unlocked. And when I read the top 10, I was hoping I was going to find, you know, Wyoming somewhere in there. And I don't know where Wyoming falls in the statistics. But the story says property plays a big role in burglar rates as states like New Mexico and Louisiana, which have top burglary charts, also struggle with high poverty rates. Uh, but then, see, I also take a look at that, and I, I think, okay, you might be that might be the case. But Washington State, second highest burglar rate, is actually one of the wealthiest states in the country. So, what gives? Well, sometimes being rich makes you a target is part of it. But I think they're they're missing something there because they're going to take a look at uh, Oregon and Washington State and say, well, I mean, that's uh, those are rich states, and maybe that's why they're targets. Yeah, but hang on. Those are also the states that allow a lot of homelessness and illegal immigrants and so on. If you were to go one of the most burgled cities, and this is a wealthy city, San Francisco, has a lot of burglaries going on. But take a look at who they allow in the city. Uh, the homelessness, the illegal immigrants in the city, they're a sanctuary city. Colorado, hey, Colorado, especially down in places like Denver. A lot of money down there, and yet... Okay. The, the crime rate is actually really high, pretty high. New York City has a lot of problems now with illegal immigration, and their crime rate is through the roof. Your odds – remember back in the 70s when your odds of being mugged in New York City was actually pretty damn high? That's where they made that movie Escape from New York and Snake Bliskin had to go in and rescue the president after his – was it a plane or a helicopter? I think one or the other crashed in New York and he had to get them out. That's how bad New York was back then. The movie Gangs of New York. Remember that one? That's how bad New York was back then and how bad it is again. And that they consider themselves one of the greatest cities on the planet. So there is a trend here. In the last 11 years, 115 people died of weightlifting accidents in a gym. In that same 11 years, only one person died of eating a donut. Make good choices, people. This program is intended for immature audiences only. Wake Up Wyoming with Glenn Woods. Weekdays at 6 on air on Alexa and 24-7 on the Wake Up Wyoming app. Before I get into the next topic here, first off, Wolfie and Campion and... Uh, He's playing off of what I was just saying. It was a list of the places in America you're most likely to have your home broken into or get mugged for that matter. And most of them are liberal cities and liberal states, not surprised. And even if they're wealthy, which the author of the article couldn't understand, why would there be so much crime in a wealthy place? Most of because there's so much money there. No, it's because they're liberal places that have let in a lot of illegal immigrants and homeless people and so on. And it just trashed their neighborhoods in their city. So on that, Campion writes, I used to go to Denver quite often. Now I never go. The 16th Street Mall is now a crap show. You can't walk down the street without getting accosted by panhandlers and homeless. Boulder isn't much better. Yeah, see, now there was a time, and this is a long time ago, was a time, I used to look at Denver and KOA Radio down there and think, wow, I would just love to work there. I, that's as far as talk radio goes, that is one of the best stations in the country to be. I'd love to be their morning guy there. Today, I look at it and go, no, I, you know, you can have that. And it's not just the crime and the homeless population in the city turning to crap. And all, you know. It's the taxes yeah, regulations, just the cost of living in general. I can make a lot more money down there, but then it would cost me so much more to live there. What would be the point? I wouldn't be keeping more. So what's the point? All right. Another quick side note. I just came across this. It's an old ad. Shows a guy on a bicycle, and it's a drawing. And he's smiling as he's pedaling and waving. 
on the back of his bike is, you know, for those guys who ride horseback, you true cowboys out there, and you have a a sleeve, basically, to put your rifle into. Right. That's what this guy has on the back of his bike, all over the back wheel. It's an ad. <clears throat> Bicycle gun holder. Yeah, for back in the days when you could drive down the street, ride down the street on your bike with a rifle sticking out the back. Bicycle gun holder. Prevent accidents. Safe for holding gun. Also fishing rod, tennis rackets, flags, etc. Equipped with U-bolts for easy insulation. At the time, this was only $2.50. Johnson Street, West Hollywood, Florida is where you go to pick this up. Wow. That was, wow. That was just so good. Cool. Again, back in the time, you can still do this in Wyoming, by the way. But back in the time where you could ride down the street on your bike or drive to school in your pickup truck with a gun rack in the back with actual guns back there. All right. This is what I was really after for this segment of the program. So let's go back to Kamala Harris. But here in Wyoming, this is a Cowboy State Daily article. Headline, Wyoming's energy officials don't buy Kamala's claim she's okay with fracking. And I wouldn't either. She's flip-flop not. Story says Democrat presidential nominee Kamala Harris leaned into Biden administration's platform on organic fuel production on her debate Tuesday evening with Republican opponents and former President Donald Trump while insisting she's reversed her previous promises to ban fracking for oil in the United States. She's also reaffirmed her support for policies in the current administration that aim to do just that. So she's trying to play both ends. On the one hand, she's got to play up to her cult of climate change base. But on the other hand, she's got to say whatever to fly over country to Texas. Some analysts in the oil and natural gas industry say that her opinions on being supportive of fracking as part of the Inflation Reduction Act is, and they're using the word disingenuous. You could use a couple of other words, some of which I can't say on the air, but basically uh, think of a big steaming pile and gooey steaming pile of buffalo dung. Yeah, okay, that's basically what we're shooting for here, right? That's Instead of using the word disingenuous? Okay. And it would come from a bull, too. But, oh, you got it. All right. Quote, I will not ban fracking. I have not banned fracking as vice president of the United States. And in fact, I was a tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act which opened new leases for fracking, she said Tuesday in Philadelphia. We've invested $1 trillion in a clean energy economy, which government should be doing, while also increasing domestic oil and gas production to historic levels. Uh, oil and gas production is happening despite the Biden administration not because of the Biden administration, and they have no business investing, as they say, a trillion dollars in wind and solar. Government should stay out of the energy industry. As I've said that, it's supposed to be a free market. Government should stay out of the energy industry. She also said we have no invest or diverse sources. We have to invest in diverse sources of energy so we reduce our reliance on foreign oil. Oh, she can do that easily. Uh, quit this nonsense with carbon sequestration. Quit spending money on wind and solar. Get out of the energy business and let the free market take over. There. Uh, story says Trump questioned Harris on a range of Biden-era oil and natural gas policies and predicting that she, if she wins the election, fracking in Pennsylvania will end on day one. And the Wyoming Energy Trade Group agrees. While Vice President Harris, and this is a quote, while Vice President Harris claims supporting the oil and gas industry at last night's debate are a welcome change, the administration she has been a part of for the past four years must own its record of delays and disruptions in the industry. And... Frankly, they say actions speak louder than words. Gee, you think? Yeah. Actions really do speak louder than words, especially around campaign time. Forget what the candidate is saying to you. 
What have they done? What's their record? Because that's what they're going to continue to do. So the story says the oil and gas industries are huge economic drivers in Wyoming. Well, duh. So, quote, no matter who wins the election in November, we need our leaders to recognize the importance of American energy independence. And I would take that a, a step farther than that. It's not just American energy independence. We need to have independence from government on this. And again, just go back to a free market system. The only thing government should really be doing is making sure that you as a consumer don't get ripped off. And yeah, let's make sure they do it clean and safe. And by clean, CO2 is not a pollutant. Other than that, make sure they do it clean and safe and they're not ripping off the general public. There you go. Then let them get out there and drill and dig and the number one source of energy will be whatever the market is demanding, whatever is the cheapest, most reliable, et cetera, et cetera, is what the industries will gravitate toward. Uh, there was a time that natural gas, as far as electricity production, natural gas was taking over from coal. And I was okay with it because it was happening for natural market reasons, not because government was trying to steer it one way or another. Coming up on some local news, we got to take care of after local news update on the weather forecast. You and I get back into it again. Triple eight ninety seven Woods, the phone number. That's eight 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 ninety seven W O O D S. It's wake up, Wyoming. Sure, this show is sustainable. We sequester all gas emissions to one room. Wake up Wyoming with Glenn Woods, live on AM 1030 and FM 95.1, weekdays at 6. 736 of time, wake up Wyoming, Thursday is the day we're rolling through. So, going to go back to something we talked about yesterday during the debate. Trump brought up that uh, this town in Ohio is being overrun. It's a town of about 58,000 people. They've been overrun by 20,000 people that are basically Haitian illegal immigrants. And it's really gotten bad there. And then he brought up cats and dogs are disappearing, people's pets. Uh, they took the ducks and geese from the ponds and they've eaten them for dinner. And and Kamala Harris is laughing at them. And then, in fact, I wasn't going to play it, but I think I'll go ahead and, and give it a try. J.D. Vance talking with a CNN host, and he just buries her on this. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because something that I said yesterday, other people are repeating the same thing. I'll get back to that. First of all, let's go to CNN and, and Vance. I would say is he brought up this misleading false claim that you yourself have talked about in recent days about Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, abducting people's pets and eating them, which officials there have said is not true. You yourself acknowledged it may be false on Twitter. You still told people to, to keep spreading it. But Trump just amplified it to tens of millions of people who were watching. Why push something that's not true? Well, first of all, city officials have not said it's not true. They said they don't have all the evidence. They but said they heard, have no evidence. We've heard from a number of constituents on the ground, Caitlin, who both firsthand and secondhand reports saying this stuff is happening. So they very clearly, meaning the people on the ground dealing with this, think that it is happening. And I think that it's important for journalists to actually get on the ground and uncover this stuff for themselves when you have a lot of people saying, my pets are being abducted or geese at the city pond are being abducted and slaughtered right in front of us. This is crazy stuff. And Okay, so I'm going to stop it right there. He goes on and makes some really good points. But journalists need to get on the ground. Now, what I picked up on yesterday when I heard him say that is I thought, well, yeah, just because you called the city manager and asked, is this happening? And he said, I don't have any evidence one way or the other. Doesn't mean no. It doesn't mean yes. It means he doesn't have any evidence one way or the other is what it means. That's not a yes or a no. So then, and see, I see this is, this is on, I'm trying to get used to calling it X, but it's Twitter, basically. Here's Stephen Miller writing, because 
just as with Aurora, Colorado, one city or mayor or governor acknowledges the problem, they're admitting the existence of the problem that started and continued under those administrative policies. So now, hey, mainstream media, he says, calling a local government official is not journalism. That's what I said yesterday. Just because you called a local government official and asked one question and the guy said, well, I don't know, doesn't mean you did any work. You actually have to go there. The story here says there's there's nothing but, well, stenographers for local government officials that were called. Videos went viral, and some of you sent me some videos yesterday about what's happening in Springfield Not one mainstream media reporter went to Springfield to see what was happening. The entire effort of the media to debunk was based on calling one bureaucrat and asking them, so is anything like this happening? I don't have any evidence one way or the other. That's it. You call one guy and that's supposed to settle. That's called fact checking. So the reason, again, I bring this up is because I had said that yesterday, and I'm glad to see that other people are on this and noticing the same thing. And this is why there's such low confidence also in news media. So here's this reporter lady for CNN trying to lecture J.D. Vance. Well, you know, we fact checked this. No, you didn't. CNN has a lot of resources. They didn't send anybody there. Nobody. So you didn't fact check a damn thing. You called one guy who said he didn't know. That's not fact checking anything. But that's your media for you. Hello, Chet. Chet's in Yoder. If I can call, if you want me to say I have no reservations on speed. Okay, wait a second. I have to go back to see what you were talking about earlier. But, Chet, you can always call me about anything you want to call about. Anytime. Chet, Chet texts me all morning long. But, you know, the phones are always open if there's something you want to talk about. Junk man in Alliance, Nebraska. I'm heading to my 16th class reunion in Sheridan tomorrow. Should I wear my don't blame me? I voted for Trump ball cap. (laughs) Looking around how many uh, ball caps for Biden. Okay, I would or shirts or anything. I would say I haven't seen any ball caps for Biden or bumper stickers. I mean, maybe there are some out there. I haven't seen them. But then again, I live in Wyoming. There, there might be a few out there that I really haven't seen any yet. So, uh, you know. But I think you're perfectly fine to wear a ball cap like that to Sheridan, Wyoming. It shouldn't be a problem. Welcome to McDonald's. What can I get started for you today? Uh, yeah, can I just get a cheeseburger? Okay. Uh, is that going to be off for today? Yeah, it's going to be off for today. All right. It's going to be $378.19. Well, I, actually, actually I, don't, I don't need the cheese. You can take the cheese off. No cheese? Yeah, let's, let's do no cheese. No cheese. All right. That brings your total down to $312.17. That sounds better. That sounds better. All right. And are you going to be paying in full or will you be financing? Uh, yeah, I'll be financing today. Okay. Okay. Let's do the finance. All right. And after interest, your total will be $61 a month for six months. All right. Covering world-ending catastrophes for years to come. It's Wake Up Wyoming with Glenn Woods. Find content, chat live, and listen on demand on the Wake Up Wyoming mobile app. About the weather forecast. So, Mark, I am enjoying what we have coming up for the next few days, but I'm worried because of all the fires out there. It's going to be windy today. It is going to be windy across, you know, southwestern, central South Central Northeastern Wyoming. We have a weak frontal system moving across the region associated with a nice low pressure system that has been bringing some good moisture. The Fish Creek Fire there west of Dubois. Uh, much improved weather conditions there. But for elsewhere, we do have the gusty winds here today out of the south southwest, 15 to 30 gusts of 40 to 45, pretty common throughout Sweetwater, Carbon. Here in the Trona County, sections of Fremont County, also up into the northeast. Do we expect some rain with this for the rest of the day? Not much. Really? So the okay. moisture is going to be staying out in the west and northwest, really over near the higher elevations, the Wind Rivers, sections of the Wyoming Range, the Absorcas, up towards the Bighorn Sum, some of the Bighorn Basin picking up a little shower and storm activity. Likewise, a touch of northern and northeastern Wyoming, maybe a few severe storms late this afternoon across northern and northeastern counties, but elsewhere 
here, Glenn. We're getting dry slotted by this weather system. This cold front is a pretty dry frontal system, and that means for the vast majority of central, eastern, and southern Wyoming, slight chance of a gusty storm, and that is it. Okay. Now, uh, you mentioned cold front. So, we do have some drop in temperatures, but uh, from what I'm hearing, it's more of a drop in the western side than the eastern side. Uh, for today, far okay. eastern and southeastern Wyoming, not seeing much. Still 80s, even maybe a lower 90 around the Torrington area, but central Wyoming, sticking generally in the 70s. The Casper mm-hmm. area, Douglas, out towards Riverton, only 70s to near 80 today. 50s and 60s up north, 30s and 40s in the northwestern mountains, Glenn. They're not going to get, uh, yeah, probably out of the 30s, above about 9,000 feet. Wind rivers, Absorcas, northern Bighorns. There is some snow for all those locations, especially the northwestern mountains here today. A few to several inches up in the high country above about 9,000 feet or so in the western and northern mountains. Okay, so hopefully that will will that help Togety Pass, do you think? Absolutely. Good. Yeah, I mean, the Fish Creek Fire has uh, received some nice rain over the last 24 to 36 hours, anywhere from oh, a quarter to maybe three quarters of an inch for sections of it. Some additional showers and storms here today, uh, rain showers, even a little high country snowfall. Then it does dry out again, not only for the Fish Creek Fire area, but across Wyoming for Friday through the weekend. All right. Thank you, Mark. Talk to you again tomorrow. So there, I, I had to get into something about the Fish Creek Fire because... Yeah, I've been hoping that some snow and rain dumps on that to at least help them out a little bit. Off to the icebox we go. Frank Gambino is with us. So, okay, part two of my list for you of worst NFL injuries. And okay. second one, here we go, Joe Theismann. I, he, wrote, he snapped his leg against the New York Giants. It was oh. Lawrence Taylor. All you need to do is watch it once. And is that the one, because I have to drag my memory back to that. Even someone who doesn't watch sports, I seem to remember this one. It was heard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Just, just, just watch it once and then you, yes. you've seen enough. And then, yeah, you're done. You never want to see that again. No, no. But I do remember at the time that that happened, people were saying, oh, I was up in the stands and I heard that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Just enough of that one. Yeah. 1978, Daryl Stingley. Yes, he was uh, paralyzed. Wow. Um, the guy from the Oakland Raiders hit him. Was it um, Tatum, Atkinson, something? One of those. One of those. And the Raiders hit people hard all the time yeah. when, when they had decent players. It, it, he's paralyzed. Yeah. Holy cow! Okay, uh, let's see. I got uh, this is all the way down to. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to get this right. Uh, Destry Wright in 2000. Don't remember that one. Okay. Uh, imagine if you're trained full of... Uh, and then during your first season as one of the uh, country's elite NFL players, I mean, everything is gone in an instant. And see. Let's just get down to what the injury was. Yeah. Right ankle. Oh, my God. It was turned complete. I'm looking okay, at the okay, picture. Okay. I, I, I don't want to see the injury. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, so all these injuries, you know, we've yes. said, said this before. You know what NFL stands for? Yes. Not, Not for, for long. long. Basically, folks, his foot was backwards. Oh okay, I don't want to, God, okay, Frank does no, 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 no. We need to go talk about something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything else over there? I tell you what, no, no, why don't no, you no. just tell it's us what's... This is a terrible yeah. subject. I'm so, okay, next hour I'll bring up something, something else. Something else. Just so Frank doesn't sit there going... Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, college athletics, according to a report by Yahoo Sports, four Mountain West uh, schools will be leaving to join the Pac-12 with uh, Oregon State and Washington State uh, beginning in the 2026-27 academic year. Reportedly, the schools that are leaving will be Colorado State, Boise State, San Diego State, and Fresno State, and 10 schools opted to leave the Pac-12, leaving just two, and Oregon State and Washington State have said all along that they want to build their brand. Now, the four schools that are leaving the Mountain West will have to pay $18 million each to leave, plus the Pac-12 will have to pay $43 million to the Mountain West in a, what was part of the scheduling agreement that they had for this season and for the following season. Now, the Pac-12 still, still needs two more schools to reach the NCAA minimum, and now the Mountain West is going to be looking for four. This is a huge change of complexion for the league. So maybe they can find, like, North Dakota State or South Dakota State or maybe Montana or 
Montana State wants to come on in, maybe invite UTEP back in the field, but this is going to be a long process to figure out um, where the Mountain West will go after Boise, San Diego State, Fresno State, and CSU leaves. Now, this week in college football, the Wyoming Cowboys will host BYU on Saturday night in Laramie. The folks are 0-2 and have numerous issues to address on both sides of the ball after a four-point loss to FCS Idaho last week. BYU is 2-0. and They beat SMU last week in Dallas. The Cougars are 10.5 point favorites in the game. 7 p.m. start. We'll have that for you on K2 Radio and Casper and KOWB in Laramie. Our latest Wild Preps High School football poll is out. Sheridan remains at number one. Chinese second. Natrona third. Campbell County fourth. Rock Springs fifth. In 3A, Star Valley number one, followed by Cody, Douglas, Riverton, and Powell. In 2A, Bighorn remains number one, followed by Mountain View, Lovell, Worland, and Lyman. Lingo Fort Laramie remains the number one team in 1A, 9-man. Pine Bluffs 2, Southeast 3, Lusk 4, and Wright 5. And in 1A, 6-man, Little Snake River 1, followed by Encampment, Burlington, Riverside, and Dubois. The Wyoming Cowboy basketball team announced their schedule yesterday in the non-conference portion. No big names coming to Laramie this year, but they will play Texas Tech on the road. They'll be in the Cancun tournament with Tulane, Loyola, Marymount, and Belmont, plus a game versus BYU in Salt Lake City. And Mountain West play, it's a 20-game schedule this year with everybody playing everybody home and away. And that's it in sports. Cowboys, you better bring it this weekend. They better, or, it. or, it's, or it could yeah. get ugly. Yeah, it really is. And, and again, they, they can... Get a big sigh of relief from everybody yeah. well, if it, they do well. But the, the fans will be certainly yes. engaged because yes. after all these years of basically mutual hatred uh-huh. between these two, you know, th- th- that means a lot. Like the BYU people think that the Wyoming people are heathens. Mm-hmm. And actually they're right. Mm-hmm. Because we like to drink yeah. beer. And okay. we like to have a good time. Yes, and we're allowed. Yes, so okay. we are heathens. Yes, but they don't are. like yes. us. No, they, they don't like that we are. Huh? Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I mean. But, we are heathens and we're proud of it. You know, we should carry that as a sign yeah, in the stands when we go to play these guys. Oh, so well, we just pick up, and they'd be like, yeah, we know you're heathens. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Got a problem with that? <laughs> yeah. They should, do. <laughs> we should, yeah. <laughs> All right, Frank. Coming up on some local business we got to take care of. We're going to roll into news time after that. National local update on your weather forecast. You and I get back into it again. Now, I got stuff that I'm going to talk about with you, but it is open phones in the next hour. So, AAA 97 Woods. That's 888-97-W-O-O-D-S. Uh, for those fans of guns, we're going to talk about the good guy with a gun and some statistics that your obsolete news media fails to mention. Let's wake up, Wyoming. Six of the time, it's Wake Up Wyoming. It is a Thursday, and I swear I can see the weekend from here. Today's show is sponsored by Horseshoe Door Stops, made from real horses. Yeah, I thought it would just be a real horseshoe, but I, in any way, the most dangerous time for this radio show every single day is at this time, and that would be open phones. Warning. Wake Up Wyoming is about to enter daily open phones. This means that anyone will be allowed to call in and talk about anything. I mean, imagine if we actually allowed you on air to say anything you wanted. Scary, right? Well, we're just that brand of crazy. If you are offended by what other people think, then maybe you want to tune out right about now. Just saying. If you should choose to call, just remember, the more funny and interesting you are, the longer Glenn will keep you on the line. Obnoxious jerks will be hung up on. (coughs) Dave, (coughs) all right, strap in. And let's do this thing. Triple eight ninety seven Woods, the phone number that's eight 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 ninety seven W O O B S. And you can talk about what I'm talking about or change the subject. Fine, I'll just kind of roll with it. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite song. Oh, I like guns. I like the way they look. I like the shiny steel and the polished wood. I don't care if they're big or small. If they're for sale. Hell, I want them all. I like guns. I like guns. I like guns. Good story from John Stossel on this one, which has to do with a good guy with a gun. Now, a good guy with a gun does a lot of good when, frankly, there's not police around and nothing against police. But 
A lot of times they can't be everywhere all the time. And if you do call them, they have to get to where you are. So John Stossel started to do research on good guys with a gun and how often they actually help people, despite what media and Hollywood would tell you. But hang on. I'm going to play that in just a moment. Bowers and Casper wants to talk about Haitians morning. Are you there? Hang on a second. Okay. Can you hear Hello? me? There you are. I got you on the air now. Had to re-push the button. What you got for me? I, I'm a fellow Floridian, and I got a comment about the Haitians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, in the early 90s, I was working in Pompano as a framer, okay. and we hired this when they had the first influx of Haitians in the South Florida. We hired several to work for us as laborers. Mm-hmm. And these guys, I remember their names, Abraham and Julian. Right. They cooked cats every day at work. Really? Okay. All really. right. I witnessed it. So I believe what Trump said the other night. I, yeah. I, I saw the debate. And when David Mears said, you know, we talked to the city manager, that's simply not true. Doesn't know anything about the Haitian people. Right. I worked around these guys for about a year. And mm-hmm. they did it almost weekly. Okay. See, what gets me still about that is, well, we talked with the city manager. So what? He just said he didn't know if it was or wasn't happening. That's not a no. And and they have no, not yet. Certainly. They still have not sent one single reporter there to find out. It's a part of their culture. Yeah, well, what they told me. It, okay. it, they don't have a lot of protein mm-hmm. on that island, so, so that's a protein source. Grab what they can. All right. Well, That's you know, it. it's either you're going to get the cat there or you're going to get it at your local Chinese restaurant. So pick one. <laughs> That's yeah. correct. All right. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Triple eight ninety seven Woods, the phone number, 888-97-W-O-O-D-S. Let me see. From Fort Sumner Casper, asking one confrontational question to a government bureaucrat who has all intentions of wanting to hang on to power is not seeking the truth. Bureaucrats are well-versed in the art of double-talk. Yes, they are. So, once again, going back to the whole cat controversy, and I did play the audio from CNN uh, earlier this morning as well, where uh, basically the CNN reporter was shot down by Vance on the same thing. But it comes down, and I'm glad I'm not the only one because I say yesterday I'm not the only one who thought about it. This, I think, hurts the reputation of the news media more than anything else. I'm not thinking so much about the reputation of Donald Trump repeating this. Because, you know, when when ABC News says, well, we fact-checked that, you called one city manager and you call that fact-checking. And the city manager just said he didn't know. The city manager did not say yes or no. He said he didn't know. So that's not a no. That's not fact-checking. You actually have to go there to fact-check. So the credibility of the media just took another dive. Thank you, ABC News. And news media credibility is already at an all-time low. In fact, I'm going to take the story I'd set up. We'll get to the John Stossel bit about illegal guns. So what I'm going to do here is take a look at um, Americans' faith in the news media poll to see what happens. Because I know it is really at an all-time low. Uh, let's see. There we go. 2023. Okay. And I'm, I'm just grabbing a few different ones here. Let's see, Americans who say they have a great deal or a fair amount of trust in the mass media has dropped to, let me see, 32%. I've seen lower than that. And even then, I would wonder, who are those people? I mean, really, if anyone still has faith in the news media, who are those people? Here's If I can get to this one, this is a Washington Post story. Uh, it says, grim time for Americans, distrust of the news media. Yeah, they got it lower than 32%. Okay. Um, here's YouGov today. Uh, okay, there, there's a good one for you. This is more like what I had heard before, because uh, I don't believe the 32%. So a Gallup poll recently found Americans' trust in the media to fully and accurately and fairly report is down to about 7% of Americans have a great deal of trust. And I would like to know who are the 7% 
who have a great deal of trust in news media. And after that ABC debacle with the debate, I would bet that number is a tick lower, but we'll see. All right, now, uh, while 27% they have a, say they have a fair amount, like, eh, okay, 28% of adults surveyed in the polls say they don't have much confidence, 38% saying they have none at all. And you know how I am with polls. So I would say the numbers are bigger than that based on my experience. But okay. The poll is the first time the percentage of Americans who with no trust in the media to do their job. The partisan divide remains strong with media trust. This is interesting to me. 70% of Democrats saying they have a great deal or a fair amount of confidence in what you would call legacy news media. Your CNN, your New York Times, while Republicans, about 27 percent say they have some kind of faith in. But even then, it's waning. So isn't it interesting that the people who have the most faith in news media by 70 percent, if that poll is correct, would be mostly Democrats? Oh, yeah, we believe what we see on CNN or, or MSNBC for that matter. Or if we're uh, reading some online source, oh, yeah, we have faith in that. Most Democrats do. Most Republicans, no. As for me, it's the, the, if you were to give me, I personally, what's my percentage when I read a news story that I believe it's accurate? It's a very tiny, tiny, tiny little number. Just, but you got to figure what I do for a living and how often I actually do check into what I'm reading to make sure it's true. My confidence in what I'm reading, even if it's from a a source that most of you would trust, my confidence is very low that it was done correctly. And it's not always a matter of bias. Sometimes it's just sloppy, lazy, incompetent. Bias certainly pays a part into it, but a lot of it is sloppy, lazy, and incompetent. So when I take a look at any kind of news, and let's go ahead to a news channel. Let's go ahead and pick CNN. When I take a look at people on CNN, or Fox for that matter, what is my confidence that that person that's delivering news to me is competent or the reporter on the street is competent? My confidence is very low in them, and that's just based on experience. Aliens are going to be super confused when they show up threatening to overthrow our leaders and we're all stoked and offer to help. Wake up Wyoming with Glenn Woods on air, online and on the Wake Up Wyoming mobile app. Be part of the show at 888-97-WOODS. This is K2 Radio. Hey, twice is the time. It's Wake Up Wyoming. All right, 888-97-WOODS is the phone number. That's 888-97-WOODS. Just head phone the phone who is calling about well, basically news media bias but let's take a look at and this get me to delve into a little bit more this is one of my hot button issues here so right now on the ridiculously large television that they have in my studio here among other things because i keep this it's fox raw is what it is it's, it's a channel out there where most of what they do not all of it but most of what they do right now there's three different windows open on the screen. One of them is a press conference. And let's see, the other one, yeah, the other two are about the uh, hurricane, but now tropical storm that just hit Louisiana. But usually they have three screens going about three different things. And they're just showing what happens. Rarely do they ever have a reporter. They hardly ever have commentators. They're just showing, here we are, here's what's happening. So on the main screen there is a Democrat who's having a press conference in Washington, D.C. And he's talking about, here we go again, Project 2025. And as we talked about yesterday, Democrats have been hammering on this. And the news media has been hammering on this. MSNBC has been really hammering on this. The Harris campaign has been beating this Project 2025 to death. But for you, if you're Trump supporters, you know... Trump really doesn't even know what the hell Project 2025 is. He never heard it until the Democrats brought it up. I had heard about it, but I really didn't bother looking into it. I don't know what it is. I finally, yesterday, I thought, okay, I better look at it. Yeah, it was. it's something the Heritage Foundation does uh, every 
what, five years is it, folks? They come out with it. Here's what we think conservatives should be fighting for. What do you think? That's basically what it is. Hot button issues for conservatives. Here's what we think they are. What do you think? That's every five years. So now we're up to Project 2025. All right. So actually, I think it's every four years. They started in 20, uh, yeah, in 1981. So it's every four years they do it. Anyway. As the Democrats keep talking about it, they first off are lying when they say that this is Trump's idea, and it's not. They also lie about what's in it. When I finally started to take a look at what was in it, I realized what the Democrats say is in it and what is in it are two totally different things. So they even lie about what's in it. Now, getting back to what I was talking about with the news media not doing their job, They keep harping on this, and yet have any of them really bothered to go look up what it is? You want to fact check someone? While this congressman is, and he's in in the Capitol, uh, not in Washington D.C., holding a press conference, talking to reporters about this, and I'm waiting for a reporter to say, "Excuse me, um, you keep pushing on this 2025 thing, but um, have you read it really? Because you keep telling us there's things in it that aren't in it. What about that?" You keep telling us that Trump is pushing this thing, and Trump's never read it. He never heard about it until you guys brought it up. What about that? If they're going to fact-check somebody and challenge somebody, what about that? When Trump said during the debate that there were uh, people eating cats and dogs and so on in Ohio, in Springfield, Ohio, Harris laughs at him, and the ABC moderator starts to challenge Trump on that. But how come when Harris brought up Project 2025, ABC News moderators did not look at her and say, excuse me, um, not only does Trump not know what's in it, he never heard about it until you brought it up, but what you just said is in it is not in it. What about that? Why are, yeah, I would love just to ask her flat out, why are you lying about this? But I don't expect the news media to do their job on it, as I, I know you don't either. Confidence in Congress, confidence in the news media, rightfully so, is at an all-time low. Which is why whenever I pick up a news story, no matter where I'm getting it from, these days they're mostly online sources. Uh, I do catch some television news, but I don't really watch it on television. I still catch it on some online news source. And in most cases when I'm reading something, I really, I, I know there's bias. You know there's bias. But even more so, it's my level of faith in the competency of the reporter to actually be curious and to do a good job as a reporter. To be curious about what the truth is. And if the reporter has an idea in their head about what the truth is, and when they go to investigate, they find out that they're wrong, will they report that? Some reporters will. Some reporters will go, oh, my God, I was wrong about that. And they'll write up the story and bring it back to their editor. But then does it get through the editor? Because many times in my career, I've met reporters who said, I had a good story here. And it blew away the narrative, what everybody thought was true. It showed that everybody was wrong. I have the details here. I have all the evidence. But they wouldn't let me report it. Well, this goes higher up the chain. It's not just the reporters. It's who's in charge here, who are the editors, who are the owners. And they oftentimes shoot down the story as well. And that can get really frustrating to a lot of reporters who are actually trying to do the right thing. But higher up the food chain, no, you can't say that. And I have witnessed that a few times in my own career when people wanted to do a news story and someone, one of their higher-ups, we can't report that. I've, I've seen that happen a couple of times. He has the evidence. You, want, you don't want to go with it? We can't say that. And so, in fact, I'll give you another one, just a, a, a sidebar. There was a, a reporter that I know who just wanted to do a survey. It was a question online about human cause climate change and whether there is such a thing as human cause climate change or not. What are your beliefs? You can't put that poll up. 
Well, that would just be embarrassing. Really? Why? Do you see what we're dealing with? So the, the level of incompetency by the media comes at you for all sorts of different reasons. Yes, there is bias. Absolutely. There's also incompetence. There's also those who worry about keeping higher up, about keeping their advertisers, or worry about uh, upsetting people higher up the chain with political influence. There's all sorts of reasons why not to trust your news media. Oh, Junk Men in Alliance, Nebraska. Were her hearing aids... I have seen this. People are saying that Kamala Harris's hearing aids... Uh, I'm sorry, earrings were actually hearing aids. In other words, her earrings, they were feeding her information because some people have found some things that they look like earrings, but it's actually a little speaker in there so, to put in her ears so she can get information from backstage. Now, is that true or not? I don't know. I've seen the pictures people have taken. And the ones that are a hearing aid or a little speaker for her to get information from Democrats in the back room. It does look a lot like that, but were hers or not, I don't know. Interesting, though, huh? That people zoom in on stuff like that. So now, going back to what I was just talking about. So you think, and you know the answer to this, will the news media investigate it or just dismiss it? And you already know the answer to that. Coming up on 830 Local News, coming your way after a local news update on your weather forecast, open phones. Wake Up Wyoming. Or want to talk to Glenn? Call 888-97-WOODS or chat him on the Wake Up Wyoming mobile app. This is AM 1030 K2 Radio. Six of time. It's Wake Up Wyoming. My name is Glenn Woods. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so I was going to play this thing from John Stossel. Now, you can still call and interrupt me and change the subject if you want to do that. That's perfectly fine with me. And this had to do with guns in America. And once again, how not just the news media, but Hollywood claims to be experts on this. And I'm going to say especially the news media. And they get it completely wrong. And it has to do with the good guy with a gun. Do you carry a gun? Bad idea, says Hollywood. Countless TV shows portray good guys who try to stop crimes with their own guns as fools. Citizens arrest, drop your gun! The wise police officer sums it up. Leave it to a good guy with a gun to really screw things up. Liberal politicians agree. A good guy with a gun will stop the bad guys with a gun. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't, say experts, the media feature. Good guy with a gun statistically isn't realistic. It's an adolescent rescue fantasy. An adolescent rescue fantasy? In places where bad guys fear a good guy might be armed. Crime tends to fall. Often just showing a weapon is enough to stop an assault. Police don't track such events, but these days some are posted on the web. Here an employee grabs her gun and the robber runs away. And again here. Three robbers caught on camera breaking into a home in Atlanta. The men scramble to escape as the woman chases them. When a civilian tries to stop one of these instances, they're overwhelmingly successful. So why do all these TV shows lecture us about how it doesn't work? The gun control groups brag about working with the screenwriters and the producers for the shows. This group even boasts about its partnership with Hollywood and how they're consulted on scripts. There's major Major star power behind an effort to rewrite the script on how guns are used in Hollywood. They think they're making us safer because they believe FBI reports that say shooters being killed by citizens is rare. Why does the FBI say that? They're simply missing a huge number of cases. For example, well, the FBI includes the famous Pulse nightclub shooting. At least 50 people are dead. One week afterwards, there was a similar attack at a nightclub in South Carolina. There, a concealed carrier took down the shooter. The thing is, it got virtually no news coverage. 
49 people being killed is going to be a bigger story than three people being killed. I understand. But the guy still had like 125 rounds of ammunition on him when he was stopped. You would think at least some of the news coverage would at least mention, here's another case that almost turned out to be the same, but it was stopped. Also, remember the Parkland shooting? At least 17 people are dead in Parkland, Florida. Just a few months later, at in Titusville, Florida, there was an elementary school that was having a big event at a park right next to the school. It had hundreds of students there, and a man came up, started firing his gun. Police say the gunman was then shot by someone else who had a legally concealed weapon. And was able to seriously wound and the attacker and stop him before he was able to go and kill anybody. The bystander saved a lot of people's lives, says the police. So the story goes on, if you want to watch the entire video, it goes on from there. John Stossel on YouTube. He's one of my favorite all-time broadcast heroes. Just go to YouTube, John Stossel, and this story is here. And it goes on quite a bit more after what I just played for you. But it shows how not just Hollywood TV shows and movies try to bash the idea of a good guy with a gun. So do liberal politicians, but also the news media as well, who, as usual, don't really get into fact-checking things. But it turns out when you do look at all of the numbers, good guys with guns – do a whole lot of good out there. George Krakowski and Larry Jones were best friends, business partners, making their way in the world. But that all changed one fateful night in January 2015. It was just like any other night, you know? We were just minding our own business, trying to break into this house. We thought it was going to be just another quick job. But we had no idea what was waiting for us on the other side of that door. My husband passed away on Christmas Day. I was all alone with my baby boy. He was just three months old. I was worrying what our lives would be like now when I heard the scratching at the front door. Two men were trying to break in. She's yelling, please, I have a baby. And me and Larry are like, okay, it's just a mom and her baby. Cool, we've done this before. But then all of a sudden. I warned them, I have a gun. And we're like, whoa, 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 a gun? Me and Larry don't have a gun. That's not fair. George and Larry were now facing a threat most of us will never have to. An armed gunman. I could see in the security camera that one of them had a big knife. Yeah, a knife, not a gun. You don't eat dinner with a gun. If you did, you might end up blowing your head off. All I could think about was protecting my baby, so I checked to make sure that the rifle was loaded. I was so scared. She was scared. We heard her load the gun through the door. Do you have any idea how scary that sound is? The paranoid gunman's threats continued. I begged them to leave, but they wouldn't. And we begged her to throw the gun away. If you throw the gun away, Larry will throw the knife away. Then it's a fair fight. Two on two. Mano a mano. Me and Larry versus you and your baby. But in a bizarre twist, the gunman called the police. Please, you have to help me. Two men are trying to break into my home. Come on, you're getting the cops involved now? That's disappointing. We figured we'd at least 15 minutes before the cop showed up. And that's plenty of time to negotiate with her. But with a 15-minute window and an armed assailant on the other side of the door, anything could happen. Ma'am, ask them politely to please not break through until the officers arrive. I have a gun. Is it okay to shoot them if they come through the door? We heard her say that, and Larry's like, she's talking about shooting us? The situation has gotten way out of hand. So he took a step back and kicked open the door. I didn't have a choice. I saw the knife and I shot him. It was either his life or the life of my son. Larry wasn't going to hurt them. We just wanted to take all their money and stuff. But you put a gun in someone's hand and they don't listen to reason. And what of the gun used by Michelle Wilson to mow down Larry Jones? It turns out it was left to her by her deceased husband. Her aim is way too good. I bet the gun was haunted by her dead husband. One night... One gun, three lives forever changed by a senseless act of violence. Breaking into houses without Larry? It's so scary now. I'm worried I'm going to get shot. Incredibly, no charges were brought against Michelle Wilson, who continues to live a happy life as a widow. But for George Krakowski, could any good come from this tragedy? That event definitely turned me into an activist. You know, what about my freedoms? As long as law-abiding citizens have guns, it's that much harder for burglars like me to do my job. I mean, what kind of world do we live in where you have to worry about getting shot at work? Unfortunately, the gun laws in the United States are unlikely to change. So, what does that mean for brave citizens like George Krakowski? 
I'm thinking about getting a gun. So what I love about that bit, and I've played that a couple of times before during the course of this radio show, I love it because it shows you about how the news media would actually cover that story if they were to cover the story. Which, of course, may, the, the woman who's defending herself is going to be seen as the bad guy. Which also gets me that the number of times that I've come across stories where someone at home alone, elderly person, grandma even, or just some single mom, whatever the case is, has to defend herself and does it successfully and yet really doesn't get much attention. Local news media covers it. National news media never does. Then they get this idea that, well, a good guy with a gun is nothing but dangerous despite the statistics, which the media would know if they ever bothered to do their homework. Take 45, wake up my... Wake Up Wyoming goes anywhere you do with the Wake Up Wyoming app. Free download for Apple and Android. This is K2 Radio. ...to help you take control of the situation with your family and manage the disease together. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Visit alz.org slash time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. It's a time. Wake up, Wyoming. Off we go to the ice box. Frank Gambino is waiting by. Dumping the last topic because it was too icky. For no, it was, it was terrible. It's horrible, yeah. <clears throat> so, okay, uh, we have on the Wake Up Wyoming site this morning, UW Cowboy Football Giveaway. What, ooh, what are we giving away? <clears throat> okay, Cowboy Football is back. University of Wyoming, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. Enter for your chance to win free home game season tickets. At War well, Memorial they've already Stadium. played one game, and the next mm-hmm. game will be on Saturday. Mm. At home, a little bit late with that. Well, it just came up. Um, let me see. Uh, by September fourteenth, so you got to go ahead. Yeah. So this next one is for this weekend. Oh, so they're, it's for the for the BYU game on Saturday. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I know they'll put up other home game tickets as they happen too. But you go to the Wake Up Wyoming website, and you just go ahead and fill out the thing there, and click to enter, and you're done. That's it. What are we giving them? The tickets to the game. Well, no, no. What are we giving them? Are we giving them their fo- our phone numbers? Oh, I see. Or Full email name, addresses? Email and phone. Oh. There you go. So we can get in touch with you. Name, email, phone, boom, done, that's it. We will not leave you robocalls no. about electing Glenn no. Woods for we, president. Absolutely. We don't know. And, and we don't do that be, kind of no, stuff. I, n- neither does Glenn. For that matter, <laughs> not Good. interested thank, in thank that. Thank God, God for that. God, <laughs> the last job I'd ever want to have. But anyway, <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that's a great opportunity for people who want to go see. And then there's the other one I noticed that they started doing those tickets where, if UW wins, then when you go buy Cowboy draw tickets. It's, oh yeah, it's two for um, buy one and, get one on Sunday on okay. Sundays up yes. until two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> on after. Games yes. that they win, yes. Yes, so that if they win, you get another chance at – you get a second set of tickets, basically. Another G- chance to win. G- guess what? Yeah. At the rate they're going, yes. it'll just be one for one. Which is what I was going to go with that. UW, you need to start winning. Yes, because we want an extra chance to yes. be rich and, get, and retire. Yeah, you see? Okay. So you guys got a chance because you're football players. It might happen to you. For the rest of us, we need to win the lottery because not one of us who attends your games has bothered saving for our retirement. None of it has. So get out there and win some games, yes. damn it. Help us. College Athletics, according to a report from Yahoo Sports, four Mountain West Conference teams will be leaving to join the Pac-12 with Oregon State and Washington State beginning in the 2026-27 academic year. Ten schools did opt out of the Pac-12 and leaving just two with Oregon State and Washington State saying all along that they wanted to rebuild their brand. The four schools that are leaving will be Colorado State, Boise State, San Diego State, and Fresno State. And this is a huge loss for the Mountain West. Boise State was the standard bearer in football for the league. San Diego State was the standard bearer in basketball for the league and well, CSU, they finally found the league that will take them after knocking on doors for like 10 years to get out of it. Since the, 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 the these schools are giving them two years notice, they will have to pay $18 million each to leave and then the Pac-12 will also pay the Mountain West $43 million to take them with some scheduling agreement that they had when they had that, uh, that football scheduling deal. So there was something written in there that if they poach teams, you got to pay. So, for the Mountain West, what do you do now? Many four teams, maybe less. 
uh, maybe North Dakota State, maybe South Dakota State, maybe Montana, maybe Montana State, maybe UTEP. Who knows? There's, there could be a, a, quite a, a list there. So they've got some thinking to do. And this week in college football, the Wyoming Cowboys will host BYU on Saturday night in Laramie. The folks are 0-2 and, and have had just numerous issues to address after that loss to FCS Idaho last week in Laramie. BYU is 2-0. and They beat SMU in Dallas last week. The Cougars are 10.5-point favorites in the game. That's the 7 p.m. start on Saturday. We'll have that for you on K2 Radio and Casper and KOWB in Laramie. Our latest Wild Preps high school football poll is out. Sheridan remains number one, and they will be at the Trona this week, who comes in at number three. East is rated second, Campbell County fourth, and Rock Springs fifth. Star Valley number one in 3A, followed by Cody, Douglas, Riverton, and Powell. In 2A, Bighorn number one, Mountain View two, level three, Worland four, and Lyman five. In 1A, nine man, Lingo remains number one, followed by Pine Bluff Southeast, Luskin right. And in 1A, six man, Little Snake River is the number one rated team. Encampment second, Burlington third, Riverside fourth, and Dubois and Matiti fifth. Wyoming Cowboy basketball team announced their schedule yesterday in the non-conference portion. There are no big names coming to Laramie this year, but they will play Texas Tech on the road. They'll be in the Cancun tournament with Tulane, Loyola, Marymount, and Belmont, plus a game versus BYU in, in Salt Lake City. In Mountain West play, it's a 20-game schedule this year. Everyone plays everybody home and away, and that's it in sports. So Mountain West wants out. Well, no, the okay. four schools, in the, they're, they're leaving. Okay. Why? More money. Gotcha. Okay. More okay. money, more exposure. Athletics is the front porch to your university. Sure, yeah. So, But it costs them money to get out. Right. So hopefully they make more money when they get in the next one. Yeah, yeah. They, so they got to okay. pay to leave. The league's got the league is going to the Mountain West is going to get money from the other league to take yeah. to take these other teams, and then you have to find teams to replace them. Okay, and, and that, whatever they have to pay yes. to get out of their leagues. Okay, so it sounds like we're going to be doing a lot of shuffling here. Yeah, a lot, of, okay. and, and that's the way it's been lately in college athletics. Think anyone's going, going to be left holding the bag with not enough teams? So, uh, yeah. I think they'll find somebody. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Coming up on some local business we got to take. We'll roll into news time after that. National local update on the weather forecast. I will let you change the subject. I want to talk about some fires in Wyoming. Hey, bar none, you're up next. Also, the gravel pits in Natrona County up on Casper Mountain and some other things like that. Next hour, Wake Up Wyoming. Sixth of time, it's Wake Up Wyoming. It's a Thursday. I swear I can see the weekend from here. Today's show is sponsored by Horseshoe Door Stops, made from real horses. Well, you could just use the horseshoe. You don't want to kill a horse for that. Warning, this show contains reference to guns, liberty, limited government, low taxation, the cult of climate change, free thinking, cigar smoking, short people, rubber chickens, Karen's bureaucracy, liberal buzzwords, tour runs, traffic, toilets, terrible jokes, and more. No apologies will be issued. Guest callers may express any opinion they want without fear of being canceled. Unless you're a loudmouth jerk like Dave, then Glenn will hang up on you. Strap in, hold on to your coffee. And feel free to participate. This disclaimer does not refer to every person named Dave. Just one particular Dave from San Francisco. We know a lot of Daves. They call this show all the time and they're great people. So don't call this program and complain that we use your name. That would be a real Dave move, Dave. I just heard that story too. Chet, Chet from Yoder just left me a note here. John Bon Jovi stopped some girl from jumping off of a bridge. Yeah, I just heard that on the national news myself. I, I'd like to see the details of that. But apparently someone's trying to commit suicide and he was able to... Talk her out of it, and they walked off the bridge together. All right, that's good news. Anyway. Hey, a couple of things I'm just going to ask for a show of hands here. <clears throat> Don't worry, I can see you through your radio. See how many people really care. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, also known by me as Nancy Poo. I call her Nancy Poo. Or the Wicked Witch of the West. Suggests that 30% of Republicans would never vote for a Democrat because they're racist, sexist, and homophobic. How many of you out there care what Nancy Pelosi has to say? Show of hands? Okay, didn't see any hands. All right. Uh, next one, Taylor Swift. Yeah, the pop star. Just endorsed Kamala Harris. Show of hands, how many people care what Taylor Swift thinks? Okay, didn't see any hands. All right. Well, I just... 
get that out of the way because it's really big news all over the place, but I don't see anybody who cares. All right. You let me know if I'm wrong about that. A couple of stories here in Wyoming. One of them is, so the town of Bar None. Now, first off, if you don't know where that is, think of Casper, Wyoming. Now go north on I-25. And the next little town up, which is on the west side of the highway, is Bar None. And if you didn't know, Bar None used to be the airport for Natrona County. And then... After World War II, of course, the air base was built there for bomber training and fighter training in World War II in Natrona County. And when the war was over, they left a nice big airport there. So Natrona County just took it over, which is their main airport now. Good decision. So Bar None is left there with all of this pavement, runways, all of that kind of stuff. So some developer went in and decided just to make it a town. And so he put uh, houses in, divided up into lots and so on. There's even a restaurant. There's one really big old hangar called the Hangar Restaurant, which I really like eating there. Uh, there it, you know, it really is a great place. But that's all that's left is the roads. It, the first time I drove into Bar None, I'm looking around going, this looks like I'm at an airport. What the heck? Big runways and taxiways, but it's neighborhood streets. And then I looked it up and went, oh, I get it now. Well, just I said all of that to say, just north of Bar None, just a little bit, there was a fire last night, and that's just one of the many grass fires that are out there. Also, up in Campbell County, up near the border with Montana, another fire and a few evacuations last night in that area. The good news is, as far as fires go, if we head on over to the Fish Creek Fire, which is the one that closed Togety Pass several times, They've gotten some rain and a little bit of snow and some more is going to come down, which will not put the fires out, but will go a long way to helping with those fires. So if you would like to see the latest fire update, I do have a story up in the Wake Up Wyoming site this morning with the latest information I had as of this morning. If there's a fire near you or around people that you care about, also... Let me go ahead and call this up again, too. This is also on the Wake Up Wyoming site. There is a group out there on Facebook that I've told you about before. And they're doing all sorts of all sorts of things to help ranchers who are going to need help. Now, that includes hay, materials, whatever they can. They're even doing online auctions of all sorts of things. I mean, from... Paintings and pictures to vacations to homemade jellies, stuff like that, to try to raise money for farmers and ranchers out there that really need the help. So if you go find that story on the Wake Up Wyoming site, if you have the app, Miss Mary will go ahead and alert it out at some point. But on Facebook, it's the Wyoming Rancher Fire Relief page, Wyoming Rancher Fire Relief. That will come up on Facebook with everything they're trying to do to raise money for people who are in need. Now, I was asking for those people in the Bar None area, since that popped up last night. And that's all I know is they started fighting that last night, and I haven't heard anything since. So, in the last 45 minutes or so of today's show, if you're in the area or if you know anything... 888-97-WOODS is the phone number. That's 888-97-W-O-O-D-S. Did they get that one out or are they still fighting that one? I don't know the details on that, which is why I'm asking. And while I'm at it, again, 888-97-WOODS is the phone number. And I'm going over to a site that I have here, which just helps me to track forest fires. Okay. So, yeah, I don't see anything new. Also... Since I'm in that area to the west of Casper is the Poison Spider fire, which has just popped. That's a new one, too. Most of these fires for Wyoming are up in the um, northeastern side of the state. There's a few also, if I go down, let me see. Uh, I'm going to go south of Warland. And there's the West Warm Springs fire, the San Draw fire. And up in the Bighorn, Hazleton Fire, and those are much smaller, but they are there. And these are things that have popped up just recently that they're dealing with. So anyone knows any details on that, I'd like to know. The audience would like to know. But also I can pass that across to the news team, 
and then go looking for more information to keep you guys informed on what's going on. Now, another story out of that same, since I mentioned the Natrona County area, we were talking for quite a while about the gravel pit that's been really controversial in that area. Cowboys Day Daily has a story. One among vocal number of uh, local residents opposing the project or proposed gravel pit mining area at the base of Casper Mountain on state-owned land. His, uh, well, th- the whole idea of stopping what they were trying to do was just shot down. Tuesday night when they tried, the group that's against the gravel pit, tried to kill the company's eligibility to get a permit. Natrona County Planning and Zoning Board rejected the effort by a 4-1 to one vote. And his recommendation to approve the gravel pit moves on to the Natrona County Board of Commissioners at a featured meeting. And, of course, that was not something that went over well with the people in the audience there who stood up and talked about how many signatures that they've had to stop the whole thing. And, you know, apparently you guys are just not listening to us is basically was the objection of all the time. Under the county zoning resolution, amendments can be proposed by the general public, provided they follow appropriate criteria, which uh, the Casper Mountain resident, Greg Werger, did. He told commissioners he believed the designation to allow a conditional use permit on the table in the zoning resolution was inserted into their last minute. And I believe it was, this is he said, I believe it was put in there so nobody would notice it. He also pointed out that uh, mining wasn't allowed on the mountain residential zone under previous zoning documents going all the way back to 2000. So that's where we are right now as that moves on to the next commission meetings to find out if they'll finally go ahead and approve it or not. Micah is in Cheyenne. Morning, Micah. Good morning. So I hear that the Volunteers of America is the charity for tonight. Yep. And I just want to ask you, I I think I'm pretty sure it does not apply just to military. I think, don't they serve just the general public as I well? I thought they did, too. What she's talking about is I'm going to be in Cheyenne tonight at Thankful Thursday hope hosting the event there. And so they are raising money for Volunteers of America to help in the Laramie County area. I'm going to the impression they help all sorts of people. We can find out when we get there. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Oh, here's good news. Thank you for that. Casper Jack said the bar nun fire is out. Thank you for that. I had no idea. I was All I knew was what I was reading when I got here early this morning, and there were people posting pictures of the fire, but I hadn't heard anything since then. So apparently the bar nun fire is out. I appreciate it. I'm just at the base of a hiking trail. A buddy of mine was like, hey, Paul, do you want to go hiking today? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to be out of breath while we talk for three and a half hours. I love hiking. You get to be outside and you get to be aware of coyotes and you get to carry around a wooden stick like you're a wizard. And you get to say things like, great day for a hike. And you get to hide and pee at the same time and you get good cardio and blisters and you get to ask questions like do you think that's poisonous and you get to pass by other hikers and not say anything and just go and you get to take hiking selfies to show everybody that you're healthier than they are and you get to see who's going to be the first to say should we turn around so i love hiking if it's happening in Wyoming, it's on Wake Up Wyoming with Glenn Woods from K2 Radio. Join the conversation at 888-97-WOODS. Right, right, the time. It's Wake Up Wyoming. 888-97-WOODS, the phone number 888-97-WOODS. So this was sent to me by DJ and Gillette. I already had it on my list of things to do today, but she sent it and I thought I better make sure that I get to it. But before I read this story, a little intro, because as you know, Obviously, we are living in the last times. And it's your fault for driving an SUV. So put on your respirator and let's fix that generator. And while we're out, we'll mend our fences too. See, I'm not afraid of dying. 
got reasons for surviving. I want one more day in the apocalypse with you. Okay, so according to the LA Times, to fix climate anxiety. Now, before I go any further, who caused climate anxiety? Well, for one, the LA Times. And also fix climate change. We first must fix individualism. Yes, how dare you be an individual? <clears throat> From the story itself, essay to fix climate anxiety and also climate change, we first have to fix individual. Do you see a problem with being an individual? I don't. Story says each year, as I reflect on my own reporting, that floods in and keeps getting worse and the toxic pollution building up in all forms of life. He lives in L.A. Everything's like that. I find myself questioning whether I could ever justify bringing my own child into this world, agonizing, et cetera, et cetera. I'll get into this in just a minute because you want, trust me, you want me to finish this. But first off, let's talk to Alf, who's all the way down in Cheyenne, Wyoming, because Alf, you and I, I've got my crazy shirt on. You've got your crazy suit you're going to be wearing for Thankful Thursday tonight. Glenn, we're kicking off our 28th season. Can you believe it's already been 28 seasons? Wow. We started this back in 2010. We're just shy of $3.5 billion raised for local nonprofits. Well, wow. and between and the two of us, me, the two of us together don't even act 28 years old, so I don't know how that's possible. Well, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. okay. Hey, it's going to be a good time, Glenn. We're at 3839 East Lincoln Way. Doors are going to open at 4 o'clock today. I know you're coming down. I invite everybody to come out and see Glenn Woods at the Lincoln Way Event Hall. And we have a brand new nonprofit, Volunteers of America. It's their first time for Thankful Thursday. Glenn, they have over 75 auction items, and we're going to have the card games. We're going to have full pork dinner. It's going to be a fun time, and we're, as you guys always say, party with a purpose. And for those people who don't know what this is, I know they do it in the Casper area. You and I all do it down in the uh, Cheyenne area. We just basically have a big party with all sorts of games and prizes and so on, and and that goes throughout the night until we get to the auction time where a lot of uh, things are auctioned off all for a good cause. And what I like about this program, Alf, is the money stays in the community. You are absolutely right, Glenn. Nobody gets paid. It's uh, 100% stays right back in the community. And uh, like you said, it's just a fun way to have a great time to raise money for a local nonprofit. <laughs> Right. And the big thing is, Glenn, as you know, you like to give away a lot of money. You can yeah. win a thousand dollars just for walking in the door. There you could. You actually could. And don't worry about dinner tonight, because as you said, pulled pork is going to be there. So doors open at one time. Doors open at four o'clock. Live auction doesn't start till six o'clock. But your first chance to win that thousand dollars is at five o'clock. So come All out right. and enjoy the fun. Once again, it's thirty-eight, thirty-nine East Lincoln Way. All right, thank you, Al. See you there. All right, so that's what I'll be doing tonight. So what happens is, yeah, I'm, I'm in Cheyenne, Wyoming, as he said at the Lincoln Way Event Center, and uh, we just throw a huge party every Thursday night for a couple of months, and each night is a different charitable organization. And again, there's all sorts of games, and in pretty much every single game, you get a chance to win money, but the pot gets split with the charity too i also love it some people will win money but they'll donate their winnings to the charity if you choose if you don't want to that's okay too then there's all the auction items and then there's dinner you know and all the proceeds from usually usually a local restaurant donates dinner and they show up and cater it and so people buy dinner and it's usually just get in line they fill up your plate have dinner and all the proceeds for that dinner go to the charity as well so they've been doing this, as he said, for, wow, 28 years now they've been doing this. And they've raised millions of dollars. And I know, again, Cheyenne does it. If you head on up to Casper, they have their own version of Thankful Thursday where they raise money as well. So if you're in the area, you don't have to be in those particular towns, just in the area. Just swing on by and say hi and have a good time with everybody raising money for a good cause. I will be there tonight all the way up until 6 o'clock. Once the auction gets going it's bedtime for me. So I go right home and go to sleep because I got to do Saturday's show, which I do out of the studios of KGAB there in downtown Cheyenne, Wyoming. And I'll be hosting pretty much every single Thankful Thursday with Alf this entire season. So, all right. Coming up on 930, I got to finish this story here on individualism and climate change. 
But if you want to interrupt me like Alf just did and Micah just did, 888 woods the phone number. That's 888-97-W-O-O-D-S. You can talk about what I'm talking about, change the subject. That's just fine by me. Let's wake up, Wyoming. He's talking to himself in a padded room, and you could be the voice in his head. Join the conversation on Wake Up Wyoming, 866-97-WOODS. 9.36 the time, it's Wake Up Wyoming. All right, so I'm I'm back to this story, but again, you can interrupt me if you want, 888-97-WOODS. That's 888-97-W-O-O-D-S. So here's an essay from the L.A. Times. Headline. To fix climate anxiety. Now, pause. Who caused climate anxiety? In part, news media. All right. And also climate change. <clears throat> well, you can't fix climate change. It's a natural thing that never stops. So you can't fix that. But okay. We first have to fix individualism. That's what the headline is here. That's what the story's headline is. Fix individualism which is the purpose of America, the individual. You are in charge of your own life, and government's job is to protect that. That's the purpose of America. Why would you want to fix individualism, change individualism? All right, so the author writes, each year, as I reflect on my own reporting, on floods that keep getting worse, no, they don't, and toxic pollution building up in all forms of life, only in Los Angeles. I find myself questioning whether I could ever justify bringing my own children into this world. Then please don't. Trust me, we don't need people like you breeding. But all right, reading on. I agonize over the amount of plastic we can't avoid using and mourn the monarch butterflies that have vanished. The monarch butterflies, by the way, are doing fine. And that's another one of the, like the polar bears are supposed to be wiped out by now. They're not. But all right. Whatever this guy gets his information from, monarch butterflies are fine. He writes, with each new heat record shattered. No, they haven't been. And I have something on that, but hang on. And each new report declaring code red for humanity. (sighs) Yes, by people like you in the news media who should be fired, but okay. All right. I can't help but feel like we're just counting down our days to extinction. This is what is writing for the L.A. Times. I can't help feel like we are just counting down the days to extinction. This is what passes for an editorial in the L.A. Times. Now, I mentioned when it came to heat waves... Every single summer, in fact, this summer, before this summer got started, there was a story that said we were already going to break heat records, even though we hadn't even gotten into the summer yet. But we're going to break heat records. Well, let's see. Here we go. I clicked on the story in my notes here. So what I'm looking at is a graph. And it shows temperatures going. It's not really a story. It just shows temperatures going way back. So let's go back on this graph. See if I can call it up a little bit closer here. Yeah, kind of. 1895. And I'll see if I can get the picture into your head. Picture where the temperatures, there's a line that goes across the middle of the graph. And we start really keeping temperatures around 1895. But just so you know, even back then, we didn't have much in the way of temperatures being taken globally. Very few people had thermometers and temperatures that were taken wasn't really done accurately. But still, they show the temperatures back there. And we had some peak heat. And then in the 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s, temperatures dropped quite a bit. Then we get to about 1935, and this is Dust Bowl era. And wow, did things get hot on this temp on this planet? 
and things got really hot during the 1930s. Then temperatures dropped down again. And there were some warm years and some cool years right up through the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. 70s had a lot of cool years. That's where you heard, in fact, for those of you who were living during the 70s, you heard that we were heading for another ice age because the 70s had a lot of really cool years. We get to about 1980, is it 90? No, more like 1990, I think is where this is about. Right in there. And wow, did we have some cold winters in that in the early 1990s. Then things warmed up again. And again, there's some hot years, there's some cold years, back and forth it goes. And when you look at where we are today, temperature-wise, we are still beaten out by the late 1800s. We're about the same range as we were back in like 1915 and 16. We're still beaten out by the temperatures in the 1930s. Those are a lot higher than today. We're about where we were temperature-wise in the late 1940s. Okay, So in the late 1990s, we're about the same as the temperatures now are about the same as they were back in the 1990s. Again, there's some hot years and there's some cold years. But overall, temperatures have remained, yeah, they're a little bit warmer, but we're still beaten out by the 1930s, for example, was a lot higher than it was today. This poor guy writing for the Times, I mean, really, he's concerned the end is nigh. Should I bring children into the world, he asks. Please don't. We do not need you breeding. 1945 was around where we are today, temperature-wise, pretty much. Nothing unusual is happening. Let's wake up Wyoming. You asked for an expert. Uh, we didn't have the budget for that. Wake up Wyoming with Glenn Woods. Weekdays, 6 to 10 a.m. and 24-7 on the Wake Up Wyoming app. Coming up at 948 off, we go to the icebox where Frank Gambino is waiting by. Okay, uh, Frank, I'm going to give you a quiz. And if there's anybody in Wyoming who can pass this quiz, it's you. I don't think anybody else can. The answer is six. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Actually, no, that is part of the answer because we're talking about different teams in Wyoming and you're just about right. Okay, so go ahead and name the mascot for these Wyoming teams. Gillette, Thunder Basin. Gillette is the camels and bolts. Bolts, there you go. Uh, Douglas. Bearcats. Yes. Buffalo. Bison. Cheyenne South. Bison. Thermopolis. Bobcats. Star Valley. Braves. Wow, this is so good. See, I knew you would just rock this. Burns. Bronx. Now, this is going to be really easy, folks. He's going to be on the streak. Cody. Wild Bill Cody. No. No, Cody Bronx. Yes. Jackson. Bronx. Sheridan. Bronx. See what it is? He's going to be on a roll there. KC. Bucks. Buckaroos. Yes. Grable. Buffaloes. Yeah, or Buffalo Chips. Or Buffs. Well. Yeah. Uh, Mountain View. Buffs. Lovell. Bulldogs. Wheatland. Bulldogs. Campbell County. Camels. Wyoming Indian. Chiefs. Wyoming uh, Wind River. Cougars. Yes. He hesitated for a I moment. I had to there. think about yes, that yes, because yeah. there's a big cougar in front of the school and the eyes yes, look yeah. real. Oh, so they don't have like some middle-aged woman trying to pick no, up the football no, players? No, no, okay. no. It's an animal. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see. Southeast. Cyclones. Lingle. Doggers. Wow, this is good. You want to keep going? No. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm tired of thinking. Okay. Yes. Okay, but no, there's a whole bunch of others here. Yeah, and I, I know if I named every single one of these, you were just going to go ahead and nail them. Because how many years have you been riding around Wyoming doing this? 38. Yes. And so there's absolutely no way that you're not going to get every single one of these I'll, mascots. I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get them all, but I, I, my, I'm... Your, my, your brain my, is my, having my, my brain's yeah. No, I understand yeah. that yeah. completely because... Uh, yeah, I get the same. I think we all get the same way when at some point, and I bet this happens to you. I do. I write articles. I prep, I prep for the show. Yeah. I do the show. Uh, and then I go leave here. I usually hit the gym, and then I go home, and I'm working on other stuff, like I'm writing the next book mm-hmm. or whatever the heck. Yeah, right. And then at some point around four o'clock in the afternoon, my brain just stops and says, "You're done." You know, it, it, here's what, what my problem was, is that yeah. that happens to me, too. Yeah. I have to keep going. Yeah. But as I would think at some point during the day, like when it gets late in the evening, 
near your yeah, bedtime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fi- finally, you shut down. Mm, yes. There's That's, too many things to think about, yes. you know, what what about my shoes? Yes. And, you what know, about my, my shoes? My, well, having, you know, like, you having shoe problems? Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's, okay. there's one pair of shoes I just can't get the stuff off the bottom of. Oh, okay. That's okay. So now we know Frank is having shoe problems. Shoe problems, yeah. yeah. Okay. College athletics, just the world keeps a-changing and a-changing and a-changing. Four Mountain West Conference teams announced that they will be leaving the Mountain West to join the Pac-12 with Oregon State and Washington State. The four schools that are leaving, Colorado State, Boise State, San Diego State, and Fresno State, this is a huge loss for the Mountain West. Boise State was the standard bearer in football. San Diego State was the standard bearer in basketball. And CSU finally found a league that will take them after 10 years of begging to leave, to go somewhere else. Fresno State, they're decent in just about everything. Now, the pack, the 10 schools left the Pac-12 to go to the Big Ten and the Big 12, leaving just two. And those two schools, Oregon State and Washington State, have said all along that they want to build, rebuild their brand. Now, the schools that are leaving will owe the Mountain West Conference $18 million to leave with a two-year notice. The league, will, Mountain West, will also receive $43 million from the Pac-12 for poaching the four schools. So now, the Mountain West is looking for teams. Maybe North Dakota State. Maybe South Dakota State. Hey, maybe Montana or Montana State like to join. Maybe Utah would be back in the fold. Who knows? Somebody has a short list, Rolodex, in their desk to deal with just this, because this cannot be a big surprise. This week in college football, the Wyoming Cowboys will host BYU on Saturday night in Laramie. The folks are 0-2. They have had numerous injuries in, issues to address after that four-point loss to Idaho last week. BYU is 2-0. They beat SMU on the road. The Cougars are 10.5-point favorites in the game, and it's a 7 p.m. start on Saturday. And we'll have that for you on K2 Radio and Casper and KOWB in Laramie. Our latest wildpreps.com high school football poll is out. Shared remains number one in 4A. Cheyenne second, Natrona third, Campbell County fourth, and Rock Springs is now fifth. In 3A, Star Valley number one, followed by Cody, Douglas, Riverton, and Powell. In 2A, Bighorn number one, followed by Mountain View, Lovell, Warland, and Lyman. Lingle Fort Laramie leads the 1A ranks with Pine Bluff second, southeast third, Lusk fourth, and right fifth. And in 1A, six man, Little Snake River from Bags then rated number one, followed by Encampment, Burlington, Riverside, Dubois, and Matitsi tie for fifth. And that's it in sports. I would like just once, and this is just my sense of humor, Frank, to go take a team called the Cougars and just have some sketchy looking middle aged woman with too much lipstick and eyeliner on hanging out by the players just to see if people get it. I, I think they will. Yes. <laughs> and they would probably tell that lady, get out of here. Get out of here. But, you know, why not just to see how long does it take people to go, oh, that's their mascot. Oh. Got it. All oh, right. maybe, maybe, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. that'd, be, that'd be ugly. Yeah, I am in uh, Cheyenne tomorrow. Oh, oh okay. okay. So you'll be sitting here with Miss Mary. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah. Frank, yeah. coming up, I think that would be the funniest mascot thing ever. Well, we're the Cougars. So here's the cougar. <laughs> Coming up on some local business that we have to take care of. We're going to roll into news time after that. National local update on the weather forecast. For those folks who like going to Thankful Thursday, even if you've never tried it, that's in Cheyenne tonight. Hope to see you there. Let's wake up my own.